All right, this is one of my favorite exercises because it's an exercise that I think everybody can learn to do safely, irrespective of pre-existing injuries. It's also an exercise you can do anywhere. Just recently, I was at a hotel. They had virtually not a single piece of equipment except for dumbbells. And guess what? With a bench and dumbbells, I was able to do step-ups. So um, we consider this a foundational movement and one of the most important ways that you will learn to load the hip and to do a so-called hip hinge. And when you're doing this movement, you wanna make sure that you're actually loading your front leg. Um, a lot of times, if you're going to get up on a really high box, you're just gonna get up there however you can. In this particular activity, we wanna actually be able to shift and push through the front foot. So it's gonna be helpful if you start on a lower box first, usually around 12 inches at body weight, get the mechanics, and then we can increase the height and load it from there. And I'd like to point out that even though I've been doing this for a long time, I always do my first set at about 12 inches with body weight, just to make sure I'm moving correctly and firing correctly. I'll typically then add a little bit of weight at 12 inches, and then I'll move to a higher box. But I rarely will jump to a higher box out of the gate. Okay, so go ahead and put a foot on. And, you know, important things here, we want to be able to shift and get load through the center of that front foot so you don't have to rely on the back foot pushing you up onto the box. So go ahead and shift and come up. So he's going to shift, he loads the hip, drives through. I like to connect the heel at the top, pull the toes up so you can really lock that working hip into place. Now on the way down, the magic here, and you don't have to do all your reps here, but when you're learning to do it, you wanna work on eccentric control, meaning you're controlling the lowering phase of the step up. So he's gonna take this right leg back, he'll relax his upper body, he's gonna feel weight come through the toe, the midfoot, and then the heel as he controls himself all the way down. Now, he made that look pretty easy. If you're new to this, if there's any kind of center of mass issues, meaning it's too far forward, controlling the eccentric can be quite challenging. So go ahead and come up again, Peter. So he's gonna shift, push through that midfoot, lock it in place. If the eccentric is tricky in the beginning, he can reach his arms forward as he comes back. Actively reach. That reach is gonna help the rib cage in the front compress and assist that shift backwards through space. One other thing I wanna make sure it's being emphasized here, as you're loading that foot, that femur is gliding back. Why is that important? That's putting a stretch in the glute and the hamstring. It's a pre-stretch. It's allowing you to eccentrically load the hip, which makes it so much easier to load, uh, to, to apply force down through the box. If I don't do some sort of loading, and there's basically two ways to apply that stretch. One is the shift forward that we're doing, but for some people, if they lack the ankle flexibility, you can get it by gliding back a little bit. You have to be careful you don't go out too far or you'll lose it. But some manner of gluteal stretch has to be applied so that you can apply force here. What we're trying to avoid is this. Right, because doing that, you're not actually loading, you're just popping up and using momentum to get you onto the box. So once you get facile at this height, and by the way, if it takes you months, that's okay. But once you get facile there, you can move on to a higher box that will allow you to put more and more load. There's basically two ways you create load here, height and additional weight. So let's just start with height. It's the exact same exercise as we just did. So he'll shift forward. He loads the center of that foot, getting that posterior glide. He's gonna drive down. I wanna point one other thing out here. It sounds silly, but after all these years, I still touch my hamstring when I do this in a warm up. And it's crazy, but right now, I can feel how relaxed I am in my hamstring and my butt. And now it's like, oh my God, I just felt it light up. I'm pushing and I'm coming up. And all of that work is being done here. Right. And at this point, if you're at this height, you should be able to shift backwards through space so that you do not have to reach your arms forward. So he's going to take his right leg back. He's going to feel more forefoot, midfoot, and there's this nice rocker back into the heel to catch him down. Yeah. Now, as the height increases, the pelvis will tend to want to overslide back or the knee will want to slide forward as a compensation for not being able to shift. 
you want to make sure that you're still getting that nice midfoot connection so you're working through the hip. And I think one way to, I think, play uh, and, and, and sort of proprioceptive that, if that's a word, is to imagine the force moving back your foot as you're coming down. So I'm kind of imagining the weight in my foot moving as I descend, as opposed to trying to think about the position of my pelvis in space. Right. Uh, you have to sort of figure out what works. This is one of those things, by the way, where I will do it with my tripod and phone set up in the gym. So in between sets, I'll watch them and say, you know what, you didn't really do that well there. Your butt was out too far, something like that. Then you can load it. Right. Once you get to the point where you reach a height where the, your, your, the top of your thigh is about parallel to the ground, and that's going to vary depending on your height. For me, that's about here. Um, the next thing you can do is start to add load. And you'll see it gets much harder, much more quickly. And while he's grabbing those weights, I do want to say, yes, you can load them at lower heights. We like this height, this 90 degree angle, because it's similar to getting off of the floor. Yeah, so if you're in a half kneeling position, you have to be able to shift and push with that much load in the hip. That's why we like this height in particular, but you can load other heights. So it's just the same as what we did before, except the stakes are way higher and you have to get the technique right, which is why it might take a long time before you get to, to load. Let's go through it one more time. So same you can't do it idea. Enough. He's going to shift. Notice his arms stay heavy. He's not going to shrug up because that's very tempting with weight. He's going to feel the weight in his hands. He'll push down, pop that right heel forward, lock the hip into place, eyes are up, and then he'll take this right leg back. He wants to relax his chest. If you've got a big, proud chest, you can't shift backwards through space. He'll feel the forefoot, the midfoot, and lower down eccentrically.